Hey guys, um, just wanted to do a quick update video uh, for you guys. Um, I'm doing good. I'm still living in LA. Um, you know, just graduated with my master's, so I'm, you know everything's going well on my end. Um, I proposed, so I got a fiance. Um, hopefully, you know, I plan to get married into this year um, or early next year. So, a lot of good things going on. But this video is more to talk about my dog. So, um, for you, for I guess for those that do not know, um, I got a Alaskan Klee Kai about a year ago. Well. Uh, a little bit less than a year. Um, Alaskan Klee Kai's are, they're pretty much like miniature Huskies. So um, they're mixed with Alaskan Husky, um, Siberian Husky, I think Eximo Dog and Sipersky. Um, so those other two breeds allow, you know, the dog to stay small. So it still has that Husky kind of look, feel. Um, here he is right here. Uh, this is Baku. <laughs> um, he's kind of chewing on a bone right now, but um, you know, those smaller dogs give it kind of, you know, keeps him around a good size. So he still has that husky look. You can kind of tell it has the same eyes. And they, you actually can get them with blue eyes, brown eyes, whatever. Some of them, I've seen some with blue and a brown eye. Um, you can get them in different colors like white, gray, uh, black, um, red. So uh, he's a gray and white. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of red in there, but he's mainly gray and white and black. Um, you know, so actually I wanted a big dog and my fiance was like, I don't want a, a big Husky is too much shedding and stuff like that. So we kind of compromised and found out about these kind of this breed and we decided to go in and, and um, find a breeder and we finally got one. Um, so, you know, this is just kind of a quick experience for me um, to kind of show you guys how that's been. But, uh, you know, he's been a great, great dog. Um, you know, he pretty much has that mentality as a husky he um he he's very dependent on his owners his his pack so he's really close to me he's close to my fiance and even you know my family but if you see someone random on the street he's kind of like mm, a little shy um and that's not with all of them some of them are very playful others are kind of i mean at least the ones i've met have been kind of laid back like they don't really like to interact with strangers as much unless they come into your house and your domain and you're kind of interacting with them and cool with them um, but he doesn't like that. So if you're like a stranger that just kind of like, oh, you're so cute. Let me go pet you. He's going to be like, mm -mm, nah. Um, but yeah, you know, he's been a good breed, um, good dog. Um, and, you know, and of course, I'm going to try to make more videos of this and of, of his life. Uh, you know, he's about a year old now. So he's actually, you know, he's been he's done a lot. Um, still getting through some training. So um, still a lot going on. But um, you know, for those that, you know, if you have questions about him specifically or the breed, you know, definitely leave those in the comments. I can make another video kind of answering some questions, but you know, um, I just want to give you guys some pointers. So if you're looking to get a puppy, um, you know, definitely do your research. Number one, um, you know, make sure that it fits your household. You know, do you have a big house? Do you have a town home? Do you have an apartment? You know, make sure the dog has enough space to do what it needs to do. Um, you don't want to get a huge dog and, and live, make it live in a tight space because it's just going to be too congested in the house and and it's just too much going on. Um, you also want to do research on shedding. He can shed. He sheds mainly more. Um, hey, what's up? Say hi. <laughs> he sheds a lot in the summer and in the winter, I think he, he grows his second coat and he tends to not shed as much. Um, so it's kind of weird. I, I assumed he would just shed all year round, but it seems to stop when it gets cold and then it comes back when it gets warm. And I guess that's because he's losing his second coat and then trying to kind of get rid of it. But he still, even once it's gone, he still kind of just constantly sheds throughout the summer. So it's kind of good now. Um, but yeah, make sure you're doing research on shedding because we have to clean up. We got a Roomba that helps a lot, cleans up a lot of the, the hard floors um, because he sheds. I mean, it, when we clean up, clean out that, that, that pan, it's like all hair. So, um, you know, definitely be prepared for shedding. You know, if you don't want to deal with that, I, I brush them maybe every two, three days, um, get a, 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 a breed that has short hair that doesn't shed. Um, definitely do that because if you don't feel like it, it's a lot of work to keep him tame. Um, the good thing about his breed is he doesn't grow that much hair. Um, he, I've never got his hair cut at all. I've cut around kind of certain areas that tend, tends to grow hair, but his full coat, I've never got him groomed and had that cut. So, um, so that's a good thing. I don't have to really pay for that. Um, other than that, you know, I would recommend, you know, uh, training, um, early, super early when you first get your puppy, um, definitely start training, you know, get a training regimen. Um, I was following an actual a YouTuber, um, that, that's, 
specifically focuses on training puppies and, and other dogs um, that he rescues. So um, start strong, um, you know, you don't have to do it like crazy, but like every, you know, maybe two times a day for 15 minutes, like just focus on one training thing that you want the dog to learn. Um, you know, if you want to teach him how to sit, how to, you know, present his paw, or, you know, in your hand, um, sit down or, you know, lay down, um, you know, stay, you know, just make sure you have a goal of what you want to teach. Um, and you got to think of it in certain situations, you know, you, you want to teach a dog to sit and, and not move all the time. Sometimes you just, you need to do something. They need to sit and, and be still, um, you know, leave it is a good training thing. I, I taught him. So if something falls on the floor, I, I immediately say, leave it. He will not touch it. You know, that's it. And I can show you guys this. Yeah, I'll probably do another video with some of the little training things I've done. Um, leave it is good. Uh, stay, you know, lay down. I mean, if he's doing too much and you just need him to lay down, you could do that. Um, you know, when the door opens, like the front door, you know, you have a lot of dogs. You can tell when they're not trained, they just run outside. You know, they don't look at their owner. They don't ask for permission to run outside. They just do. I got it to the point where I can open the door. He knows to wait for my signal and then he will run outside to potty or whatever he needs to do. Um, sometimes I'll just let him go. But, you know, if I, if I look at him, he will not move until I tell him to. Um, I'm trying to think anything else. Um, I've taught him to spin, how to paw. Um, you know, he doesn't eat until I tell him to eat. So if I put it down, um, he will just stare at me and then I, I nod my head or say go and then he will eat his food. Um, another big thing, especially if you have a big dog, um, when they're playing with toys and I've seen this and this is something I really didn't think about when they're playing with toys at a young age, um, and they're biting, you know, bones and stuff. Take, I know it, it seems kind of, it sucks, but take it from them with your hand and give it back to them. Take it from them, give it back to them. The reason you'd want to do this is because there are very, there are a lot of dogs that when they get older, they get very protective of food and, and their toys. So if another dog comes over, they will snap at that dog if they try to go for their toys. Or a human, you may try to grab a toy and they may snap at your hand. Those are the dogs you do. I mean, you don't even, it, that, it sucks, you know. And the reason they do that is because when they were kids or, or puppies, they would get a toy and the human would kind of back off. They wouldn't never touch it or anything. So... In their mind, they're like, okay, this is mine. Don't touch it. You don't have no reason to touch it. You don't want to have them get that mentality. So when they're little, even when they're eating and they're like deep in their food, just take their food. You're not going to keep it away from them long, but just show that you can take it, um, that you're the alpha. Um, take that, that food, put it back down just so they know that it can happen. If they're biting this toy, like, look at him. He's, he's chewing on this toy. I'm not... I'm not afraid to pick this toy up. It's nasty and gross. He's not going to bite me and I'll give it back to him. That's what you want to do. You don't want to have any fear that if you're grabbing a toy, I'll do it again. Look, he's chewing on it. I'm just going to grab it. He's not going to bite my hand. He doesn't want me to take it, but he's not going to bite me for it. I can take whatever I want. So that's what you want to train um, and, and teach them at an early age. Potty is a little different. So uh, potty it was one of the hard things that I, I, I had to do deal with for him. Um, he, when I got him as a puppy, he would use a potty pad and i kept him locked in a cage in the living room. So it was kind of like a, he couldn't get out. I kept his cage and potty pads, um, around kind of an enclosure. Um, I, he doesn't do that, use that anymore, but he had an enclosed space that he couldn't have access to the entire living room. Um, so when he would come out the room, he typically would use that potty pad. And then he got to a point where he got older and he was trying to break out of the cage because he wanted more freedom. Eventually, I allowed him to do that because it was get, becoming a tool, it was becoming too hard to keep him in there. He was, he was starting to jump higher and um, without having to buy a whole new enclosure, I just said, OK, let me just see how it, you know, how it goes. So what I did was I opened the enclosure. I put a potty pad near his cage on the other side of the room. He started using that. And of course, he had mistakes in the beginning. It wasn't perfect, but he knew that that was kind of his spot. And then once he got used to it, he always went over there. Um, and, you know, it, it still have mistakes. It's not perfect. What was weird was with him, he would not use the bathroom outside when he was a puppy. He would only use that potty pad. So I used to try to take him outside to walk. He would not potty at all. He would only do it on that potty pad. And I was like, OK, this is not going to work because... 
luckily at this house we have hard floors so if he potties i can clean it up really quickly if he poops i can do it but i'm like in the future we may move somewhere with with carpet everywhere and he i don't want him used to using the, the bathroom in the house you know it's it's fine when they're a puppy because you're not really taking them outside they really need to get vaccinated and things so they can't really go outside so it's a good thing to have them in the area where they can't use the bathroom indoors but then once they get vaccinated they can go outside you kind of want to teach them to go outside and and one thing that was difficult is that you know it's convenient when they can just you know they can be talking to you well not talking but you could be playing with them and then they got to go they just go into the corner and potty you clean up the potty pad put a new one down whatever you know when you start trying to train them to go outside you have to physically take them outside you have to remember and you know get on a system that you know maybe every two three hours or so take them outside to try to use the bathroom if not bring them back in um that was a little difficult for him he would not use the bathroom and eventually you know i took him out more on walks and he started to use the bathroom um that that made me a little excited i was like okay so he can do it um even so he still was more catered to that potty or the, the potty pad so what i did was i i kind of you know i moved the potty pad a little bit closer to the steps because there's a down there's a staircase to get to the front door i live in a town home um so i kind of moved the potty pad a little bit he would kind of transition a little bit and then he would um you know he still would want to use it and you know eventually i realized okay he's he he doesn't really want to go outside he still wants to use that potty pad so what i was doing was i started taking him out all the time and this you know a lot of people wouldn't do this but i started taking him out like every maybe like once an hour just to, to use the bathroom and see if he would use the bathroom if he used the bathroom i would give him super praise i would give him treats i would take him on runs like he just everything i can do to show that this is what i want you to do if he will potty inside, I mean, of course, I'm happiest on the pad, but I'm not going to give you all that excitement. You're not getting a treat anymore, all that stuff. So I was kind of like trying to get him to a point where he realized, oh, well, I want that excitement. I want that treat. So let me try to do it outside. So I started doing that like for two weeks straight, just constantly. And eventually he started to stand at the steps when he had to go and he would go downstairs look at Well, he'll look at me, then run downstairs um, because he had to use the bathroom and then I would open the door. He would go out and use the bathroom And then eventually I just took the pad away now. I will say it wasn't perfect He knew where the pad originally was so if he really had to go and I didn't see him go by the steps Or I was busy showering or something. He would poop in that spot where the pad was um, and Even if the pad wasn't there. He still smelled that spot I guess and he still used that bathroom so it, it wasn't perfect it took a minute i you know of course i said no don't do that um i sprayed it tried to you know destroy the scent that was there um i heard that water and vinegar was a good thing so i sprayed that and he hasn't even tried to use it over there anymore um but you know it wasn't perfect it's a learning experience you learn and, and you improve um now he he stands by the steps he potties outside so um so yeah you know other than that you know i've been taking him to the beach we've done hikes he's, he's been a great dog um he's he's one of the more shallow ones he doesn't bark he just kind of hangs out chills um does his own thing um but uh you know he, he he's pretty cool um but yeah you know he's a alaskan klikai you know pretty good pretty well mannered he doesn't bark okay all in my face he doesn't bark too much he's pretty chill um he's a good dog um you know, and I've seen some of his siblings, his sisters, they're feisty. And, and a lot of them got trained too. He was, he's the only boy in his litter and he's just very relaxed. And I don't, you know, I heard that some of the girls are a little bit more feisty. Um, so if you're thinking about one, could take that into consideration. Boys tend to be a little bit more chill, um, but you have to make sure you're training them right. So, um, you know, and they're trained too. They just are, are different, you know, so um, it, everything, uh, you know, you have to do everything correct um, to the best of your abilities. Another thing with this breed is he was very afraid of other dogs when he was young. Um, this is the last thing. He was very afraid. So, you know, of course, when they're not vaccinated, they have to stay in the house. He had only been around his his litter mates. So he once he came here, he was by himself. Um, he did not enjoy being around any dogs. He was, fr he was frightened. He would run away. Um, and what I did was once he got vaccinated, I started taking him to the park and specifically it was a dog park nearby. I kind of got him used to seeing dogs, um, outside, you know, 
you know, way to do something he wasn't used to. And then eventually I started taking him in the dog park. Of course, I kept him on a leash, but um, he hated it. He was jumping on my leg. He was crying. Um, and I, you know, I, 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 after looking at my training regimen, I was like, okay, I can't give in to him. If you pick him up, then he's realized that if he cries, he's always going to get picked up. So what I did was I still had him on leash following me and I knew the pup. I mean, they were small dogs, so they weren't biting or anything like that. They were just kind of sniffing him. And what I did was for about two weeks straight, I took him to that same dog park every day at the same time after work. And I walked him in there and he cried and he would, I would not pick him up. I just have him follow me. Um, you know, I kept my confidence high so he didn't know that I'm not, you know, scared. And he eventually, after those few weeks, he, he got used to the dogs coming up to him, smelling him. And then eventually he just, he started playing with them. So there's a lot of things you kind of learn as you go. Um, I did a lot of research on that. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick, you know, thing of my experience with my dog. This is my first dog. So I'm learning as I go. He's only a year old. Um, this is going to be his full size. So he's not going to really grow anymore. Um, but yeah, he's, he's been a great dog. So just wanted to give you guys that, that kind of, you know, feedback or my feedback about my, uh, being a dog, uh, dad for a year. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you want to see more videos with Baku, um, let me know. I'll add them on there and try to make some more videos with them. Um, if you need me to show training or anything like that, let me know. Um, but yeah, hope to do more of these. So until next time, peace.